Hello and welcome along. We are back in Microsoft Flight Simulator and today's video is going to be, uh, I guess you'd call it a tutorial, I'm going to call it more of a quick start guide uh, for the PMDG 737. Now it doesn't matter which model variant you have, I have the 737-800 here, but this video applies to all models uh, inside the flight deck, they are all identical. Now when you first jump into the flight deck of the 737, I know it can be a little bit daunting, there's an awful lot of buttons to press, so I just wanted to create a sort of simplistic guide uh, to help you guys get the plane started up and off the ground. So the first thing to explain when initialising the aircraft, there's actually three stages uh, to getting the engine started. Uh, you need to have ground power in order to power up the APU, and then the APU in order to power up the engines. So there's a bit of a sequence that we have to go through. So to the overhead panel then, the first thing we need to do is switch the batteries on and close the cover. And then we can go down to the FMC in order to connect up the ground power. So we go FS Actions, uh, Ground Services, and then we request the ground power on the left hand side there. And then we just have to wait a couple of seconds for the ground power to become available. And we can switch that on. Uh, let's just come out of here a second and go back to the FMC. So if we go back to the overhead panel, uh, there we go, now the ground power switch is available, so we can stick that on. And if we look in the panel above, make sure the, uh, the switch is set to ground power, we can see um, the readout that the, the aircraft is all powered up. And the next thing we need to do is align the IRS, so a little further overhead, we need to set these two switches to NAV. Um, it will say on DC to start with, and then uh, after a few seconds it will flip over to line so that's what that's what we're looking for those little white lights to come on so both switches to nav and then wait for a line to light up okay so now we follow a little flow down the center of the overhead panel um, we put the emergency exit lights to armed and close the cover and in the next section we put all the window heats on uh, like that and also the probes can go on and at this point I normally flip the hydraulics on as well so let's pop those on Right, so now what we want to do is come down to the FMC and start popping in some flight information. Now it's saying nav data out of date, that's just because I can't link my Navigraph account on the Xbox. So we're looking for POS in it, so we hit that. And now if we select the GPS coordinates, um, that puts it in the scratch pad. We can drop that in to set the IRS position so the plane knows where we are in the world. And we can also put in our uh, departure airport and gate, so that goes in here. We're at Heathrow, which is E G L L. Uh, drop that in and our gate is 342 so we can pop our gate in there like that and there we go that the uh, GPS matches up with uh, what we've set for the IRS so that's all good now for the purposes of today's flight we'll uh, say we're going to Gatwick so EGKK for the destination and this is also where you put in your flight number uh, but we're not going to do that today as it's just uh, just a guide uh, so yes, uh, we go to the departures, we're going to be leaving from runway 27 right, so you drop that in and you also add your standard instrument departure, we're going to be leaving on the Maxit SID, hit root, hit activate and then the execute button. And that is pretty much our departure information uh, entered into the FMC, so if we come back up to the primary flight display and switch the view to plan mode, just here we can take a look at our SID, make sure all the waypoints are correct and that we're looking like we're heading in the right direction so we can step through these one at a time yeah and that shows us that we're heading out to max it so that all looks good and as this is a quick start guide I'm not going to add in any other waypoints or airways as you would normally do uh, from your generated flight plan we're just going to stick with our, our SID information um, just to get us off the ground essentially. Right, so the next thing we need to do is add in the performance data for the aircraft for takeoff. So we head down to the FMC and hit init ref, and this is where we start putting in our weights and fuel, etc. We have a zero fuel weight of 62.7. Uh, and this is all information that you'd normally get off your flight plan so we can we can just populate it with some uh, random figures for now we'll put uh, 2.0 in the reserves and our cost index can be uh, 58 I think for today uh, that just tells the plane how efficiently it's going to be operating so we'll put that in there 
and then we can put a cruise altitude of 8,000 feet in and again this is information you get from your charts um, so we'll put a transition altitude of 6,000 for today's tutorial that will be fine good right so we can go into the N1 limit for takeoff now we, we don't need to change too much information in that and um, that'll work fine for today's tutorial so we'll go straight to the takeoff page and we're going to be taking off with five degrees of flaps our center of gravity is 24.9 uh, which gives us a trim of 5.12 so if we come down to uh, trim settings and we just put that in wind the wheel around till it gets to about 5.12 doesn't need to be exact uh, that will do fine around about there and we can also put in our flaps for takeoff at this point so if we uh, click on the uh, five there on the flaps it'll the handle will go down to where we need to be. In the FMC uh, you can now see our V speeds are ready to put in so we'll go 146, 147 and 155 which means we can now go up to the MCP and start configuring the autopilot so for the speed we normally go with the V2 ref and add a 10 knots on so we'll go 165 for that one okay so now we need to input our initial heading uh, which is 269 uh, so we just spin the heading bug around to 269 uh, around about there and moving on from there we can now add in our um, transition altitude and we'll put in at 6000 which we uh, put into the FMC earlier so that can go to there and we can flip on the flight directors now both sides, flight directors on and we're going to be using LNAV, VNAV and we can also put the auto thrust on now so that's pretty much configured for the MCP and the only other thing we need to do is enter the QNH information which we get from the live meter which today is 1009 uh, so we come up to the barrow and we just dial that in uh, using this oops, button here 1009 cool right so that's the fiddly bits out of the way we are ready to start some engines so into the overhead panel uh, we'll get the uh, kids sitting down in the back so if we put the uh, seat belt lights on and then I follow a little flow down this left hand side your damper on left aft fuel pump on then we go ahead and switch the APU on um, just while that's firing up uh, it's a good time to switch on our anti-collision lights there they are that just lets the ground crew know that the airplane is about to be live and we can also add our cruise altitude into the pressurization panel uh, which was at 8,000 feet and uh, also our runway elevation it's about 100 here at Heathrow so we'll pop that in there and if we just pop outside the plane we can have a look to see if the APU is doing its thing now the APU is a small jet engine in the rear of the aircraft uh, as you can just see now there's a bit of heat bellowing out of the back so that shows us the APU started up and that will supply compressed air down to uh, both engines which allows them to spool up and we can add, uh, add our fuel in and get the engines ignited so we're just waiting for the APU light to become available then we can transfer the power over uh, to the APU from the ground power there we go so we hit these two center switches here uh, and that will transfer the power over and if we go a little further overhead and quickly double check that the power is coming from the APU now so that's all good uh, which also means we can now disconnect the ground power so back down to the FMC uh, we hit menu FS actions again ground services and we are now going to release the ground power and whilst we're in this screen as well it's a good time to remove our chock so hit that button there there we go and we are about ready for pushback so uh, back overhead uh, we're going to switch all our fuel pumps on across here and depending on how much fuel you've got on board uh, you may or may not need the center fuel tank so let's have a quick look yeah so we've got quite a bit of fuel in our center fuel tank so we'll also need to put on those uh, so back overhead uh, there are these two switches above so that's it all the fuel pumps are on and we can put the APU bleed on and that's pushing the compressed air through to the engines as I mentioned earlier 
and it's at this point where you'd speak to ATC and get your clearance for push and start. Uh, so we'll go down to the FMC, hit push back, and we're going to go in uh, standard uh, L uh, with our nose to the left. And then we select the tug, and away we go. Hit the start button. Okay, so now it's time for the fun part, we can start the engines. Uh, we normally start with engine 2, uh, so select the ignition switch to engine 2 uh, there, and if I come up overhead you'll see a bit clearer. Uh, we select the uh, starter mode to ground, and the compressed air starts feeding through to the engine. And what we're looking out for now, if we come down and have a look at the N2 figure here, that will start spooling up. We need to wait for that to get to about 20, 25%, um, and then we can introduce some fuel to the engine, uh, which is here. There we go. And uh, that will ignite the engine now, so we can just come back overhead, and essentially we're waiting for the that ground selector switch that we put on earlier to flip back to off, and it'll, it'll do that automatically. So we'll just wait a minute or so for that to happen as we start pushback. Let's have a look at the time. What are we on? Uh, 11 minutes 20 seconds. So I said it was going to be a quick start guide. That is that is pretty rapid. To, from cold and dark to push back. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with that. There we go. Say goodbye to the jetway. Great animations here as well. This is the Innibuilds Heathrow scenery, and it's uh, it's really nice. And there we go. That's the selector mode switching back to off. So now we can uh, switch the ignition over and repeat the process for engine one again. Flick the selector mode to ground, down, uh, waiting for the N2 to spool up again to 20, 25%. And we can come down and whack some fuel into the engine. That's uh, official aviation industry terminology. Uh, just waiting for that to get to 20. There we go. Okay. So back overhead, again, wait for the selector switch to go automatically to the off position, and then we're ready to transfer the power over. And pushback is complete, so we can put the parking brake on. Brake set. Just a few more seconds to wait. Um, I don't know what that ground crew's doing, he's doing some kind of on-the-spot moonwalk, that's nice. And there we go, that's now returned to the off position. Uh, we can also return that to the centre. And now we're ready to transfer the power over from the APU to the engines by using the two outer switches there. So there we go, the aeroplane is now uh, completely powering itself, as we can see. Uh, so we can uh, turn the APU off. So we come up to here, switch off the APU bleed. And while we're here, let's put the packs onto auto. That will uh, that will pressurise the cabin. Uh, APU off and taxi lights on. We are ready for taxi. So again, at this point, uh, you normally get in touch with ATC, uh, get your clearance to taxi. Uh, whilst you're waiting for that, uh, I normally do a few systems checks, make sure everything's working as it should. Um, so if you come to the centre here and hit the system button, it will bring up uh, all your ailerons and rudders etc on the on the central display. And we can do a full left, uh, let that come back to centre. Full right, again let it come back to centre. Uh, full forward and full back. And I'll also do a, obviously do a few few pumps on the rudder pedals, make sure that's all working. Good. Okay, so if we come uh, back to the system button, we can we can switch that screen off now. We don't need that. And I normally put the uh, auto brakes onto RTO for takeoff at that point. So I'd normally check my Navigraph charts at this point just to check our uh, taxiing route, but we haven't got that today. So we'll use the the VFR map. You can see us there on the apron. 
and we've got a taxi all the way over to 27 right which is here so it's a it's a fair old taxi today so I think um, once we've um, once we've got started, I'll probably speed it up a bit because it might be a little bit boring just taxiing all the way out there. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, you can see the route we've got to take. Okay, let's give it a bit of throttle and see if we can get it moving. Yeah, I can see that spooling up, so let's release the parking brake, which is down here. Parking brake off. And we should start inching forward. Here we go. We are taxiing. Now I know that's a lot of information to cram in to 15 minutes of me just talking at you but um, hopefully it gives you a basic understanding of some of the aircraft systems and, and how they work. Uh, I know it seems quite daunting but once you've done 9, 10 flights um, it really becomes second nature, muscle memory kicks in, you get into a flow of everything so it really is like riding a bike, a bloody big bike with wings and jet engines. Right, so I think now's a good time to sort of speed up the taxi in a little bit because it's still going to be a couple of minutes before we get to the hold short. So, yep, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll speed things up and I'll see you when we're holding short. Okay, so here we are approaching the uh, hold short for runway 27 right. And we'll just bring it to a halt so we don't incur any penalties or any fines for the airline. There we go. So we'd speak to tower and get our clearance for takeoff. And we just do a last few checks. Uh, TCAS mode on. And we'll flip that on there as well. Um, landing lights on. Runway turn off lights on. Taxi lights off. Uh, start up mode switch to continuous and we'll put the strobes on as well. Okay, we've received clearance for takeoff and we are good to go. So let's see if we can get a nice turn and line up right on the centre line of the runway. That would be ideal. It's always a bit tricky taxiing, uh, I find, especially in the PMDG. I don't know quite. It doesn't seem quite as responsive as other planes, but uh, with a bit of practice, you get to learn how it handles and uh, you normally get to where you need to be. This looks pretty good. So there we go guys, that concludes today's quick start guide for the PMDG 737-800. I hope you found it interesting and useful. Um, if you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe, and I shall catch you in the next one. Bye bye.